And from food sources, let's not go into supplementation just yet of that, but from food sources, what are we looking at that give you the highest amounts of glycine? Essentially, any food that's going to give you collagen is going to give you the highest amounts of glycine. So that would be sort of like what we covered before in the bone broth formation of collagen collagenous meats. Um, that would be um, bone marrow, turkey necks, drumsticks, um, salmon skin, things like that. Now, getting into the supplementation, because obviously we're, we're not getting enough just from diet, um, as you mentioned, but you know, looking at the the supplement market right now, um, a lot of these collagen powders I've heard use bleach to extract collagen from the bovine hide. Is, is that a safe way to go about going? Are, are there less toxic methods to extract high quality collagen? So it depends on what type of collagen you're looking for. So most, um, let's say, type one collagens are they use bovine hide. And then a marine source will use basically just the discarded um, fish, you know, basically what you don't use regarding the flesh, um, which doesn't mean that it's bad. You're getting, you know, the, the scales, the fish skin, the bones, you know, so even though it's quote unquote discarded, that's really all the good parts that you're looking for. So some people, if they're concerned with the extraction um, used for the hide, they'll, they'll lean more towards marine collagen. Um but the hide gives you a little more type three compared to marine. Um, but the marine typically has a lower molecular weight and is absorbed better. So there's kind of benefits to kind of combining both, to be fair. You you can get um, uh, sort of collagens that are uh, grass fed, that don't use pesticides, herbicides, that um, will give you an actual a third party test for heavy metals as well. So just if you're concerned about the sourcing or, or the contamination, you can just ask for what's called a certificate of analysis and, and quality companies can, can uh, will, will provide that. Yeah, it's all about the COA. I know that in uh, production yeah. of, of uh, you know, uh, supplements there. Um, right. What would you be stacking with that collagen to really make it the most efficient? You know, we, we talked about like glycine, copper, vitamin C. Is there a certain kind of stack that you would do with your collagen to truly make it bioavailable, make it as efficient as possible? Yeah, I, so I combine my type one collagen, which I do actually get multiple sources. I, mm. I do the, the bovine hide, I do use the, the marine. And you mix um, that together? Yeah, well, I just buy it as a multi-collagen. Okay. Yep. Um, and then I'll add, uh, well, the product that I take has eggshell membrane in it. It's a multi-collagen from ancient nutrition. And then I also will add what's called type two collagen. So type one collagen is good for bone and skin health. Type two collagen is a little bit better for joints because that's what cartilage is made up of. So it gives you a little bit of extra benefit in regards to joint health. So I'll add about one to two grams of type two collagen, 500 milligrams of eggshell membrane, about 90 milligrams of vitamin C, and then 10 grams of type one uh, hydrolyzed collagen. And the timing of this is important. Right. You don't want to just take collagen when you're being sedentary. You want to have some type of stimulus that's going to send those collagen peptides um, to the skin, to the joints. And what will do that is increase in blood flow. So if you work, if you take it prior to, uh, or after an exercise, that's going to help sort of drive those collagen peptides, um, to the site of action better.